Now, if you're the sort of person who likes to sit and contemplate the mysteries of this big earth, I got one for you. How do you think these blocks of ice landed on this here shore? Think they're some kind of giant balls of hail from a crazy frozen storm? That would be quite the spectacle. But in a way, these shipwrecked icebergs did arrive here by a violent natural event that's relatively unknown. And to solve this mystery, let's find out where all this ice came from by taking a flight over the glaciers of Patagonia. Right now, you're looking at Patagonia's southern ice field. It looks like a frozen ocean, doesn't it? But unlike the ocean, which receives fresh water, the ice field is where it's born. Patagonia's ice fields stretch a thousand kilometers, guarding Earth's third largest source of fresh water. It accumulated over millions of years of snowfall that compacted over the eons to form a mass of ice that sprouts glaciers in all directions, like a giant icy sea star. Here's one of its glaciers, Ventiscara Tempano. It flows from the southern ice field, marching down to the sea. As it goes, it carves a valley as it rambles with the signature U-shape characteristic of glaciers. Since ice has taken water's solid form, for a solid glacier to slide down a mountain, you bet it's going to crack and grind and make all sorts of fractures. That's what's made these deep crevices here and sharp-pointed seracs. Over the edge, Venisquero Tempano throws itself into the sea. That makes it a tidewater glacier. Its ice has journeyed for thousands of years, frozen together. Now it'll melt and they'll go their separate ways in a sort of marine afterlife. But not all glaciers make it to the ocean. Hanging glaciers have retreated up valley so much that they're just stuck to the wall of their mountain mothers, frozen like cowardly clouds, their vaporous kin. This glacier has scoured out a deep cirque at the base of Cerro Castillo, the waters that fill it up form a kettle lake. This here's Glacier Isabel. She too's dying a rather lonely death. Although she crests these mountains like a frozen tsunami, you can see mighty plain she ain't what she used to be. Sure, Isabel's left her footprint. It's what's called a trim line. It marks her last glacial maximum, which was about 150 years ago in what's called the Little Ice Age when Patagonia's glaciers last advanced. Now this colossus is called Cayuqueo Glacier. It lives in the shadow of Mount San Lorenzo, the second tallest peak in Patagonia. These brown stripes are piles of rock debris called moraines. Glaciers are like giant bulldozers, making moraines on their sides and at their termini, but these ones on top are from several glaciers scraping the sides of mountains uphill, or upstream as it were, as these glaciers flow together like tributaries, bulldozing their way on down. When they dump their sediments into the water that's flown out, it's called glacial till. It mucks up the rivers with all sorts of pretty colors. Yeah, these powerful waters can't deny their glacial past. The gray-brown Neff here submits to the Baker, Chile's biggest river. This confluence demonstrates real well how the glacial till in the Neff mixes with the Baker, river that's as color changing as a chameleon as it collects its tributaries. I might have liked the Baker River. It drains the General Carrera Lake, the second largest in South America. And if you're a keen listener, friend, you would have noticed how I said Patagonia's ice fields and that there's a southern ice field. And since we're playing along that you're keen, you probably figured there's a northern ice field as well. Well, it's thanks to the Baker that they were split in two. You see, General Carrera Lake used to drain out to the Atlantic. We're talking geological time used to. But then 13,000 years ago, there was a mudslide that pushed its waters west, forming the Baker River. And after 5,000 years of the Baker pushing on Patagonia's ice field, it broke through in what's called a glacial lake outburst flood. A flood that lasted for three months. That's some mighty power. Now this glacial lake outburst flood, or GLOF, for those inclined to acronyms, brings us back to these chunks of ice you were wondering about. You see, these gloffs are happening all the time, and it's the same thing that threw our icebergs on the shore. They're from Glacier Bernardo, 
They surfed the big tsunami like that big kahuna. As a buildup of meltwater underneath and behind Glacier Bernardo broke through an ice dam somewhere and threw everything downstream on the wayside. This Glacier Bernardo has a gloth about once a year, and while it's nice to contemplate the peaceful permanence of this near eternally mystic ice, you sure don't want to be in the way of its next mile and outburst. And so that's how this ice got here, walking up on land. It fell as snow on Patagonia's southern ice field, made it out to Glacier Bernardo, was pushed all the way to the front to calve off as an iceberg, and surfed the big kahuna gloff out here, where it will melt and rejoin the sea. With any luck, it'll fall again as snow someday, and it just might land on a chunk of ice. I sure hope it does. Thanks for listening. I hope you get to see it for yourself someday. <laughs>